Hey guys, what's up? My name's Warren. Thanks for checking out my channel. This will be the first video for the Air Shooters channel. Um, unfortunately, it is going to take place inside um, and with a shitty camera because that's all I have right now. Um, that said, obviously I'm not sponsored by anybody. Nobody sends me anything. Everything I have I pay for, um, etc. So, um, with that, uh, the reason why we're inside today is it is negative 10 outside and snow up to your eyeballs. Everything is uh, pretty slow moving and I'm certainly not doing any shooting outside. So, um, topic of today's discussion is my regulated Air Force setups. Um, I've been talking this up on quite a few of the forums and people have been asking me quite a few questions about these things. So I thought I'd make a video and kind of um, structure it that way and go through um, what I have here on my uh, Talon and then also I'll go through my Condor so there's two setups for the Condor, so, uh, but anyway, um, so let's start with the Talon. I've owned this thing since like 2004. I have killed enough critters with this thing to fill this whole room to the ceiling for sure. Um, but with the stock tank on it, it's basically a valve and then just the tank. There's no regulator, so as your tank pressure drops, so does your point of impact. And uh, knowing that gun for so many years, I, I got pretty good at kind of knowing where it was going to fall, um, but I'd really like to have all of my impacts be in the same spot, um, which is why I made this regulated setup. Um, also, I've played paintball for like 25 years, and I'm very familiar with pressurized air and the benefits of regulators. Um, paintball guns have two regulators. One is on the tank, and then the other is in an inline reg. So basically you have, on a, on a paintball gun, not on this gun, you have 800 PSI, well, first of all, you have 4,500 PSI, 800 out, and then in this grip reg, you're gonna have the operating pressure of the gun. It's regulating to 120 to 200, typically, um, for, for that consistency. So, understanding that regulating is making consistency, I made this. Now, um, I started with a Ninja 45, 4,500 light tank. Um, when you get towards the smaller volume tanks, you often see these chubby looking ones. Um, I wanted a more slender, long one so that I could get a proper cheek weld down on it. Um, and couldn't really do that with that because I have a straight adapter here. Um, the adapter is a JDS Airman and I've, I'm also using his reg. The adapter is good quality. The reg, sorry JDS Airman, it was garbage. Um, I had to replace the piston and do a lot of tuning to it and um, the gauge was leaking and all this stuff so um, also I could have gotten that for cheaper so um, basically I also messed around with the Belleville uh, springs or washers in there um, basically how regulators work is you've got your bottle pressure then you've got a regulator that has a piston in it and above the piston whatever pressure that is is going to be pushing down on those piston springs or Belleville washers so those need to be tuned for to match that strength, so to speak. So in this one, I've got it configured for an 1800 PSI output, 1850 or so, meaning it's taking 1850 pounds to compress those Belleville washers enough for my, um, on the bottom of the piston is a uh, seal. And then that seal plugs up the tank and lets no more air come out of there. So it's, it's basically like an equalizing force where you need um, those springs to be tuned for whatever output you're gonna have. Um, so in that case, that's what I have. Um, paintball tanks have 5 8 UNF threads. Um, I think it's 5 8 by, what are they, 16 UNF threads. I could be wrong. Um, easily look upable online. So that's one thing about U.S. paintball tanks. You need to make sure that, you know, the reg you're putting on it has the U.S. threads. Air Force's valve, even though they're made in the great state of Texas, is M18 by 1.5 threads. So it's a metric thread. So to make this one, um, I got the tank. I removed the stock reg, sold it. To do to, to remove regs, you're gonna need a reg uh, removal tool. Um, my buddy over at BMC Fabrication, BMC, uh, his name's Brandon. Uh, he makes them, he'll even splash anodize it for you. Um, so you can get one over there. Um, but basically, I got the tank, ripped off that reg, put the uh, another reg on. You can buy like preset higher output regs with PCBs becoming more power, more uh, more just mainstream these days. You can get them on eBay. Um, I use the JDS Airman adapter and then a high flow Condor valve um, plugged into that. And important here is I removed one of the I removed the fill nipple here because you cannot 
fill against a piston in a reg. If you just listen to what I said about you know the how a reg works, that's not a possible thing to do. You need to be filling down at the tank. So I removed that off of there, and you can see here I've got 4,500 psi in the tank, 1,800 at the reg, and now this thing is shooting 21 grain Kodiaks or Barracudas at uh, 740 feet per second, which is 25 FPE. Um, excellent testing gun. Just the perfect amount of power for squirrels, up to 50 yards, rabbits, they, they, they all fall <laughs> by that. Um, so this one is getting about 120 shots per, well, from 4,500 PSI until I go under the reg. So I've got 120 consistent, even shots out of this setup, which is exactly what I was going for. Um, and I did put the striker weight in here because of the condor valve but i don't think i need it because it's at the zero setting and no matter what i do with the power wheel it's um it's staying at the same velocity so i could probably scrap out the um, hammer weight and then i'd be able to adjust the velocity more it's because i'm at 1800 psi where you know the stock tank is at starting at 3000 so i, I don't think i need the hammer weight i'll mess around and tinker with it some more um, okay on to gun number two so this is the Condor, it's an absolute muscle car of a air gun, um, and the differences between, you know, having a reg and having the stock tank, um, obviously I, I went through that you're going to be more consistent with a reg, but one thing I didn't touch on is volume. You're going to need volume to get those higher powers. The stock tank on an Air Force gun is just a giant plenum or volume chamber, because all you have is the valve on the top, and right behind that is all that volume. So when you dink in that valve with your hammer, um, that volume is able to really smash that pellet down the barrel. And that's why these are such a muscle car of, of guns. They are not the most efficient, but they are definitely powerful. Um, so let's, let's, let's stay on the muscle car topic first. So if I wanted to keep this consistent and not have my POI drop, I can keep this tank at 2800 by having a tethered bottle. Um, how I did this is Basically, this is another paintball tank, 68 CI, 4,500 PSI. I have a special Ninja, um, it even says not for paintball on it, but that's a 2,800 PSI reg. So, um, you can basically tether this to the fill nipple on that Condor tank, um, but I want to mention one thing, because if you do it with a standard remote line, you're going to get the thing stuck on there, and it's never going to come off because you're going to have pressure in the line, and, um, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. So you need a slide check, which is that right there. Um, basically how this works is put the Foster uh, fitting on there, put the slide check like that, screw the um, universal field adapter down onto the pin in your tank. I should have had this ready, my apologies. So basically how, how a paintball uh, tank opens up is you push that pin valve and it opens up the seal and then you get pressure out of it. So with this, you know, if you screw it down, it's going to let the pressure fill the line. But when you unscrew it, these ones don't actually vent. So now you've got pressure sitting in this line. You can't remove this because there's pressure on it. So that's why you need the slide check to go pssst, pssst, and remove that pressure. Then you can take this off. This is great for bench, bench shooting. Um, if you're not really mobile, you're sitting there with this tethered to your gun. Um, you can keep that tank at 2800 because 4500 PSI is in the, in the tank. You're outputting 2800, so anytime that, when it's connected to this, gets below 2800, it's going to crank it back up. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can also kind of hang this off a belt or throw it in a backpack, and yeah, it's kind of goofy to have a, you know, a remote line coming off your gun, but it works, and uh, that's that's one way you can keep the huge power. If you're willing to sacrifice some power, you can do a regulated setup. Um, I'll take you through this. So this is a Tipman 48 CI tank. It is the chubbier kind, 4,500 PSI. I've got a Ninja Flex reg on here, which is meant for PCPs. It's an awesome reg. It is adjustable from 2,200 to 3,000 PSI. I've got a gauge here for my input pressure, which is the tank pressure, 4,500. And then of course I had to put a really dope uh, center flag OG paintball gauge that you'll probably never see again on the low side. So that's at 2,800 PSI output. Um, it's got wrench spots on here, so you can adjust um, the, the pressure from 2200 to 3000 PSI. Next piece here is the, uh, it's, a, it's a CO2 adapter, but it's aluminum. 
This is similar to the one Air Force makes, but Air Force, theirs is steel, and it's heavy as sin. So I, I originally had that, scrapped it out, got this. I drilled through. There's a little pin depressor in there, which when you screw the tank in, it presses the pin valve and releases. So what I did was I, re I removed that pin valve from this reg, and I drilled that through to get some extra volume. Because remember, you're not making power without volume. So I got a couple extra cc's of, of volume by drilling this straight through with like a, I don't know, I think I started with a 3.8 drill and then went up a little bit till it was almost touching where it needs to seal. So, um, but anyway, then I have this little plenum, which is angled um, because since this tank is fat, being that this is angled down, it still allows me to get a nice cheek weld and see through my scope just with regular, you know, high scope mounts that everybody uses on the um, Air Force guns. Um, and then on top of that, I just have a high flow valve. So just a Condor valve. Um, so M18 threads, M18 threads, standard ASA threads. And then of course your tank has the, I think it's 5.8 something UNF. It's, you, you can find it online easily. But um, so that's basically it. That's basically what I've done to make these three separate regulated sit, uh, systems. So um, going back through it again, 4,500 PSI tank, regulator, reg adapter, that's kind of a mini plenum, uh, 1,800 PSI, I'm getting 25 foot-pounds. With this guy, I'm shooting 23 grain NSA, NSA slugs at about 45 foot-pounds, so that's like 920 feet per second or so, um, at the 2,600 PSI uh, setting. With the Talon, I'm getting 100 shots before, 120 shots maybe, before I go under the reg. With this, in the muscle car Condor, I'm getting like... I don't know, 35 maybe. And then with this guy, I'm not even really sure of the shot count. Um, probably less before I go under the reg because I'm using just tons of pressure and uh, power on that one. But uh, but yeah, in summary, that is those are my three reg setups that I use for these Air Force guns, and uh, it has made shooting way better over the stock tank. So. Um, hopefully that's informative. Uh, I'll be coming out with some more videos where I'm like actually, you know, outside shooting stuff. Um, but with the snow and cold today, I, I thought I would sit here in front of my safe and, and make this one for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one, man. Thanks.